Saturday, June 17th, 2023. We are all set for the finals of the RFYC Nopang League's Inter District Championship Finals. A long season is set to culminate with the most talented children from Mizoram set to go head to head in the under 11 and under 13 age groups. But on the morning of the finals, things take an unfortunate turn. But how did we get here? What is the Nopang League and why is the children's game so vital? To find out, let's go back to the beginning. The RFYC Nopang League is a joint effort by the Reliance Foundation Young Champs Academy and the Mizoram Football Association to promote football in the state. The genesis of the Nopang League is tied um, intertwined with the baby leagues that the Football Association the All India Football Federation had rolled out. Uh, the concept is a very simple one. It is trying to give um, provide access to kids at a young age to the sport. and giving them the engagement levels necessary for them to have a chance to do well in the future we also have an opportunity to um, give access to girls as well giving girls those equal opportunities is something that is very near and dear to our founder chairperson's heart mrs ambani's um, and through the nopang league we are able to do that kids in india just are not afforded that opportunity to participate um, and engage with football at those young ages so we're talking 4 5 6 years old uh, compared to let's say some of our asian counterparts let's take the example of our academy we'll have a player that will come to young champs at the age of 13 um not having had the same footballing experience that a player in let's say japan would have uh, academies like ours are really finishing schools which is why recruitment and talent id is so important it's extremely difficult for children to um pick up the skills necessary to succeed in the sport if they're if they don't have those engagement levels at those appropriate ages we all have you know same thought that you know, if we start it young if we catch them young you know we have a future otherwise we keep on repeating the same thing again and again you know uh, so we felt there was an opportunity to do more uh, impact a larger group of players in a non residential format help them get the building blocks necessary for them to succeed in the future if they choose to take football up professionally and hopefully given time um see a marked improvement in the quality of talent that comes through and play, goes on to play for club and country we were trying to identify regions that had strong cultural tailwinds uh, we did a we did an analysis of um the players that compete in the in the top tiers of indian football uh, for club and obviously for the national team as well and we found that per capita mizoram was right up there we're not really reinventing the wheel over here we're going to a place where there are strong cultural tailwinds there is a very uh, strong appetite for the sport and we just wanted to help improve what was already happening so give it our investment give it our structure and it was also important for us to work with well meaning competent and capable partners but having a great idea and turning it into a reality are two different things bringing the nopang league to life on the ground was a mammoth task and despite best efforts some challenges remained so we were very excited but once we started the process once we had a series of meetings that excitement you know kind of turned into apprehension because there were lots of logistical challenges lots of commitments have to be made and uh, mizoram being uh, you know where gr- uh, grounds are not available in plenty so that challenges was there but then we sat down reliance being a very professional uh, setup they guided us through through all this so even though we had some hurdles before we i think we managed to avoid them day one was crazy <laughs> it, it was crazy you know kids naturally they are all very very excited to get the kind of you know jerseys the stockings and all the things which comes along with 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 the nopang league you know when they got to see all those they they they, they were just crazy 
but I'm sorry to say that you know the the, the ground which we booked was not good enough and they, they were stones here and there you know we wanted the children to have a much better experience than what we were able to give them on that opening match day uh, but I'm proud of, of our team where we course corrected quickly, we shifted venues, um, we learned from those mistakes, improved on the experience that we were able to put on for the, for the kids. Not only that, you know, some, some teams, they, they turn up late, and that was the first day, you know, and some teams, they turn up too early, you know, maybe two hours earlier than, you know, their game time, they were feeling hungry, some of them were crying, you know, everything was like, you know, for the first time. It was not organized and we can't organize it b b before we started, you know. So it was a challenge. To be honest, it was a challenge. The first day was crazy, but, you know, uh, from the second day onwards, we know what are the challenges, we know what needs to be done, what time we need to prepare ourselves that way. Uh, it's, it's a learning, it's a learning. And we started uh, mess day one, mess day two, mess day three, after that uh, mess day five. So our team and parents understanding the no Pang League philosophy. So I think starting with just the structure, um, you can think of the Nopang League, it's best described in layers. So at the base layer, you have the, the league itself. So that's 33 match days spread across eight months. A layer on top of that is something we call DECO, so de decentralized coaching. It's a first come, first serve, additional coaching and training sessions for, for the kids. And the, layer, the third layer on top of that is where we uh, give a little more age appropriate training or let's say potential appropriate training. Uh, so we do have some lens of talent ID where we say, okay, these kids are showing a lot of promise and potential. They'll have a different experience and a different level of coaching and training sessions made available to them. The beginning of the season was a little bit hard because it's a brand new experience for us and uh, what we used to experience is a tournament, knockout tournament, but for an open uh, I mean, for the uh, players playing for a 33 matches, it's absolutely a new thing for them. Uh, initially, it was a little bit tough, but uh, later on, we catch up with the uh, following the pace and uh, at the end of the season, everyone is really happy and even we are seeing a lot of improvement from the kids as compared to the first day. So that is absolutely good for their development too. Even in the early days, the Nopang League clearly was something never seen before in the state. Now, uh, when you look at the Nopang League on the match days, you, know, you find parents coming here leaving all their work behind. The support has been, uh, you know, nothing short of uh, spectacular. Uh, we, we have attended last session and this session, the coming session, so we are uh, looking forward for um, great uh, improvement, uh, both in the skills, uh, training, everything in the core as well. So we are looking forward for it because like we have faith and we know that this uh, Reliance uh, Young Champ, this Lopang League will take them to uh, better places. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it's more than 45 minutes. Uh, it's almost one hour. Because my son, he, he woke up so early when every time when it's, uh, when it's match day, He'll wake everyone up, like saying, we'll be late, we'll be late, hurry up, hurry up. So <laughs> we were so excited. Each player come with their parents, some their elder brothers, their younger sister, everyone is coming here. I'm surprised that in some matches also in Premier League or sometime also, this type of gathering could not be possible. We started in the Isol West side, the west side of Isol. So uh, there's a ground there in which we started. Uh, I was told, that uh, the ground used to be empty. But after the start of this Nopang League, the ground, the kids have been flocking there to play their games. And also uh, this, another uh, impact is that there is a increase in the number of admissions in the various small, small academies run by, you know, different coaches. We used to 
organize a parents meeting quite often before we start this season. So many parents used to turn up more than we expect actually. So the, what the feedback, what we got from them is like they really like it, they really love it. So the good thing about uh, Lopang League like uh, is that parents said that like earlier their son, their daughter were keep busy mobile phone and all this stuff. So now because of Lopang League, most of them they stop those kind of habits which they used to do at home. So yeah, parents, other than parents, the community itself responded uh, quite well. The Nopang League aims at getting players playing at a young age. But as they grow older, formal coaching plays a more vital role. Keeping this in mind, RFYC organized decentralized coaching or DECO sessions, where participants were trained by RFYC coaches in formal, structured sessions. We thought that the DECO session would be quite valuable for the kids here to uh, firstly get into understanding what training is, or getting into understanding what a structured training is. Uh, we identified uh, without a lot of training, uh, the players here in the past have reached heights, have went on to represent the country, uh, the ISL teams, I-League teams and uh, quite a number of players here have done well for themselves. Uh, if these kids are put into a proper training structure as to what is the need of the hour for them at that particular age, uh, I think uh, the output of that would be quite in a large number. So that's where we felt that uh, along with playing games, a structured training session program is needed. Once a player comes for Deco, then at the weekend they have a match day. So whatever they learn in Deco, that they can uh, expose, that they can use, that they can utilize that uh, whatever they learn in Deco during the match day. So the relation between the Deco and match day is also, uh, it goes smoothly, then we see a lot of improvement. Yes. Along with training the children, RFYC recognized the need to upskill the local coaching infrastructure as well. To that end, RFYC and MFA organized training sessions for the local coaches. We always say that Mizoram loves football. Mizoram is a footballing state. We produce lots of footballers, but we don't have good coaches. So the kind of you know coaches we, we have in Mizoram, I don't say that they are bad or they, they, they are not good enough, but we don't have you know enough number of coaches. We really need you know, good coaches to train, to train our boys and girls. Yeah, when you have a good school, you need good teachers. When you don't have good teachers, you don't have a good school. So that's the same in an academy. Uh, when you uh, want to lead an academy or want to have a good academy, you need good coaches because the coaches are the shortest way to uh, develop of uh, youth players. Uh, you can, of course, uh, take 300 uh, players together and do something. But when you have a coach who, who gives a direction and a clear structure, how to work on what, eh? because one side football is a pretty easy, simple game, but on the other side uh, it's, it, it's, it's an, uh, a lot of uh, different aspects you have to, to know, have knowledge about, and, uh, or you do from everything something, or you do it structurally, and I think coaches who are educated have a plan and uh, know how to, uh, to, 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 to develop players in different age groups uh, and different tactics and technical things. And so I think it's very valuable to uh, invest in the good coaching structure in India. For that matter, Mizoram is also trying its best through the All India Football Federation. But with the coming of the Nopang League, you know, it really helps because you know, we can train it you know, from the e-license course, which, which really helps. The impact, you know, of this kind of courses which was conducted you know, under the banner of the Nopang League, we are going to see it in the next four or five years. It's going to be huge. We are also having uh, the referees here. Uh, if you look at the Nopang League, the match days, the referees are all very young. There is one boy who is just 14, I think. He came here actually to play the Nopang League, but he was over age. So he said he'll come in as a referee. The Nopang League is a ray of sunshine in the often rain-soaked state of Mizoram. In part 2, we revisit the exciting IDCH finals, the Mumbai trip that followed and an old problem that raised its ugly head once more.